So until here, we have discussed about the fossil record of animals. We have discussed about the fossil record of the plants. But when an organism is living in an environment, it is uh, showing some of the signs that it lived in that environment. So these remains might not be exactly the part of the body of that organism, but it tells us that that organism was in fact there at some point in time. Such fossils are called trace fossils as we have defined earlier. So these trace fossils are very much important in understanding and they are quite helpful to study the behavior or the lifestyle of the ancient organisms. So the trace fossils represent the activities of organisms. So organism, what is form is, what is structure, what is morphology, what is anatomy that we can see from its body fossils. But what we cannot see that how this organism behaved, that we can only see in the form of trace fossils. The trace fossils may be treated as fossilized behavior or biogenic sedimentary structures. So these are the fossilized behavior that means the ancient behavior. Some acts or the sets of acts, they were fossilized in time. That means they have been preserved in time and that acts were done by the ancient organisms. So what are the types of uh, fossils, uh, trace fossils? The trace fossils include tracks and trails. What are these? We'll be discussing burrows and boring uh, fecal pellets and caprolites. What's the difference between the both? Even though both are the extremants. Uh, root penetration structure and the kind of pellets, we'll be discussing all of these. And then there is naming. So trace fossils are named on the basis of shape and ornamentation, not on the basis of sponsor maker environment or stratigraphy. So all the later three things, that means supposed maker, the organism that makes those trace fossil, the environment or the stratigraphy, that these are the things which are irrelevant. We don't name these uh, the fossil on the basis of these things. Instead, we are uh, naming it on the basis of shape and ornamentation. That means how does it look like? And what are the origins? One animal may produce many different kind of trace fossils. And one trace fossil type can produce many different, can be made by the many different type of animals. So not one animal can make only one trace fossil. One animal can make many trace fossils. And one type of trace fossil can be made by many animals. And uh, how, what are the shapes? Uh, the trace fossils may be produced within the sedimentary layer or on the surface. The trace fossils may be preserved in the round and may be seen as molds or cast on the bottom and top of the bed. So these can be having different forms and shapes. And what are the different classification? The trace fossils may be classified according to the mode of behavior represented. For example, movement, feeding, farming, dwelling, uh, escape and resting. So all of these behaviors of the organism can uh, in turn translate into the trace fossil if the conditions are right. So ichnofaciae are the, the certain trace fossils assemblages and these are called ichnofaciae. Um, these appear to repeat through times and may give clues about the environment of deposition. So sometimes you know that when there is a muddy layer going on and the organism who walk on that layer they can show some tracks on it. If that was a sand or some uh, different type of material instead of mud, you won't see those signs of walking in those environment because now the sedimentation has uh, changed. And then there are the tears. Uh, tears means the different layers of these echinofaciae. The trace fossils often occupy particular levels or the tears in the sediment column. The depth of tearing has apparently increased through time and limited use in uh, the, these tears have limited use in the stratigraphy except in some special cases. So this was about the trace fossil. We will be discussing a little bit more about the trace fossils in the next topic.